We live on location. We here in Atlanta. Yo, yo. Over here at the CNN yeah, yeah. facilities. We got action going on in the background. Don't don't worry about that, though, because we got legendary status in the building with us. We got the blackest one. You know that, don't you? D Miles in the building with us. And then we got the special honorary guest, Ms. Ty Young in the building from the WNBA, representing and blessing us with our presence. Appreciate you for coming, though. Appreciate you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Thank you for coming to Toast It Up. The first thing we ask everybody who come on the show is, when you made it to the WNBA, who's the first person to bust your ass? The first person was Tarasi. Mm. And she like gave me this elbow in the game. And I'm like, hold up. Like I'm, I'm a rookie, but I ain't no punk. So I had to get aggressive back. But she was probably the first person to bust my ass. She was hard to guard. Yeah, she was. <laughs> Trust me. She's a great shooter. She's super smart. She know exactly where to come off of the screens, get to her spot. So yeah, I had to level up with my defense because mm. coming in the league, I wasn't trying to play defense at first anyway. You want to try to play D? <laughs> trying to get a bucket. I was trying to get buckets. That's what. Yeah, that's what I used to do in college. So just like me. Yeah. So you want to try and play defense, but and you it, had to play D. It yeah. went to either you gonna play D or get embarrassed. That right, was, it exactly. was like, all right, I'm gonna choose the I'm gonna choose the lesser of the Eagles. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and try and play D. You know, I yeah. sit on the bench. Yeah, so. but you're a defender now, though. Yeah, I watch you like you you defend. They put specifically put you on on their best scores to to stop them. So now you a defender. Yeah, now. they changed my role. I, I got a coach way. that was like, I got my scores. So you either gonna play defense or you gonna sit on the bench. So. I'm like, all right, cool. Then I can't shoot the ball 20 times. I'm trying to lock somebody up that's going to shoot the ball 20 times. So. I always got respect <laughs> for people like that because I feel like that's how how I went in my career. I went, I started out like coming out of college, it was like, Shh, I ain't never heard of playing defense. We didn't even play man to man in college. We played zone. <laughs> I ain't even know principles or nothing. So it was like, man, you remember when I first got here, I'm like, I'm about to just score. I'm right. like, I'm going to rebound and score. Then went to Phoenix, they was like, nah, you ain't posting up no more, just shoot. <laughs> then I went from there to like, nah, you about to play defense or get 60 put on you by Kobe right. and Melo and LeBron. I'm like, all right. Then I became a defender. So when I see people that start out like that, like you was a bucket getter, but now they put you on the best defender. Mm -hmm. Like I got big respect for that. Thank you. You just explained all that and you ain't never been a defender in your life. <laughs> Like, why you just sit here and just lie that whole little segment? Say, bro, you you need to quit it. You ain't never been a defender Like, in your I know life, when we bro. was together as Clippers, I was just trying to get buckets and you was the lone ranger running out guarding whoever. Like, late in my career, bro, that's how I, I stick around. I apologize for that. So he gassed it. He wasn't a defender? Yeah, that was big ass. <laughs> hey, big in ass. the words of my good friend and neighbor, Drew Gooden, it's Googleable, people. You can <laughs> Google it. I, I no lies told. It's Googleable. Right. So you, you know, we big Michael Jordan fans. You went to the same high school as Michael Jordan. So when you came out of junior high, it was no question. Was this the only high school in Wilmington? No, we had four or five in the area. But it was no question you was going to the one that Michael Jordan Yeah, to. that too. And my sister was already going there. My uh, sister's three years older than me. Okay. So, I mean... That made it even better because, you know, I grew up in Wilmington, so I grew up a Michael Jordan fan. So yeah. to go to the same high school was like a no-brainer. I was that, to when see I was... that jersey like hanging. Yeah, it was dope. You know, um, they had his pictures, his jersey, everything around the gym. You know, like this is the greatest player ever and you're at the same high school. So we got Jordans, Jordan gear. So it was cool. So let me ask you this. when you, At high school... Did you did you like surpass any of MJ records at school? Like scoring? Yeah, I scored the... more points than MJ. Wow, yeah. that's a bar. That's a bar, right? Yeah. You feel me? Like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? That's a humble brag if there ever was one, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, that's tough. So, so you got the you you like the all time score? Yeah, that's a for bar. the females. It was one guy, I think that was that had more, but for the females, I was yeah. Who put the ball in your hand? Who installed the game of basketball? My brother. In you, your brother. Yeah. So my big brother. What he used to like? He used to play. Oh, before. he used to kick my ass. <laughs> 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 and he used to play. He didn't play college. Um, like he went to a small high school. So, but he was really good. Yeah. And he taught me, and he helped me. And it's like when I made it, I was living a dream for both of us. Yeah. That's dope. So yeah. Who was the woman that you seen that you was like, I want to be like her? Teresa Weatherspoon. 
We'll have to spoon. Yeah. Spoon. Growing up, my yeah. uh, my auntie was That's a Liberty a season one. ticket holder. Oh, so okay. she used to always take me to the Liberty Games. Mm. And I just loved her Legend. game, her energy, just how she was. was. Her presence was always felt on the court. Yeah. So, yeah. In high school, you wasn't like one of the top ranked players. No. In the state you was, but yeah, not like not in the in country. The nation. Yeah. So like, did you win state when you was in? Nope. You didn't win state. Never. Did mm-hmm. you win Mrs. Basketball? For my my um region, Your I did. Region, yeah. yeah. So you was a late bloomer. Yeah. So when people start noticing you, when did that come? Um, it was my senior year. Junior year, we were uh at a North South um All Star game and I won MVP. Mm. And that's when different college coaches was like, Well, who is this kid? Um I was I started AAU late. I didn't play AAU but for two years. My yeah. sophomore mm. year, my junior year. Yeah. Um so schools um didn't know who I was. And then at that point it was kind of too late because I already had like my eyes set on the schools that I were interested in who showed me the most. I already interest. had put that time yeah. in with mm-hmm. you, I feel you. So was could it have been any other school? Outside of school that you chose? Was it a possibility you was going to go somewhere else? Not after the fact. Uh, previously, I never thought about going to James Madison. You know, I was thinking of Carolina or yeah. NC State because those were the Biggest the big school. schools in yeah. my in the state that I lived in. Even when I was in high school, we used to go to those camps, NC State uh, team yeah. camp. Yeah. So that's all I really knew. But then as I started playing and teams started sending me prospect letters, those schools wasn't sending it until after that they oh, saw so, me and right. then they started sending the letters. I'm like, it's too late now. Some people, they commit to a school and then they just, like, once this bigger school want to get me, they just were like, nah, I ain't going there no more. I recommit and yeah. go there. What made you not, like, recommit when bigger schools finally seen you and um, still go to James? For one, I'm a loyal person. And for two, I wanted to go to a school to make a difference. I knew... You know, people were coming to me like, you can't make it to the WNBA going to James Madison. Um, Where is James Madison? I never heard of this school. But the way the coach and the team made me feel when I went on my visit and with the communication, I felt valuable and I felt like that's where they really wanted me to be. So growing up, my mother always taught me, you know, go where you want it. And so that was the thing with JMU. And I just felt comfortable and I never wanted to turn my back on you know, the the love that they were showing me from the beginning Straight to somebody up. else. That's what I say. Go where you appreciate it, not where you tolerate Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so at James Madison, you uh you there. When did it, it click that you just as good as the other girls in the country, even though you're not playing the bigger schools mm-hmm. like that or you're not on TV or you don't get in most of the pub as the Yukons, the Tennessees right. or any of the When did it click that uh you was like, uh, I'm good enough to – be one of the best players in the country? Uh, probably my uh, sophomore year. Um, I was invited to USA Basketball. Um, and, you know, I, I thought I did well. Yeah. But, of course, it was about who you know and what school and all of that. So big names. Yeah, yeah, when I got um, sent home, I knew it was something else. But my coach was always good with – making uh, scheduling games for non-conference against the higher rate teams. And when I used to go to work and bust ass, I'm like, I'm just as good as these players, if not better. Um, So it was probably then my my sophomore, junior year where I realized, you know, like it don't matter really at this point where I'm at, you know, as long as I'm getting buckets. But even then they still question after I got drafted, you know, because I went to a mid-major if I was good enough to be in the league. Getting buckets. You get drafted to the dream, mm-hmm. and I know this is like a, a a dream come true. All of us want to get drafted and so forth. On. So how surreal was that when you got drafted and a dream picked you up? You're going to Atlanta. That's close to North Carolina. Right. I know you probably didn't been to Atlanta before. but And you went number eight. Yeah. After, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying, going right. to James Madison and flying under the radar, you yeah. know what I'm saying, not making a USA team. Right. Like, you, I know you got picked up with some people that made it or whatever oh, yeah. and all of that. Like, I know that Definitely. was Definitely. Yeah. So I was, I was nervous, but I was so excited. I didn't, my coach was telling me, you know, these are teams that are interested. I can go this number, I can go that number, but you never actually think you're going to go that high, you know, coming from a mid major. And you got all of these players from Tennessee, Duke. UConn at the draft. So when my name was called, I was just like, 
you know, shook up. It didn't Were seem you real there? at Did all. You go? Yeah, I was there. I was invited. Yeah. That's dope. And so I remember uh remember whispering in my mom's ear, like, Mom, we made it. I know that's gotta yeah. be sick to not to like have that un like like that not knowing feeling of whether you're gonna go high or low and then you go high right. like that yeah. when you weren't really like that's that's and dope. people were still looking like who is this right, kid? Right, that's dope. That's <laughs> dope. Did, did, did that valid validate your like confidence and like because I know like when I came up it was like people was telling me like oh man you good you this yeah. you gonna go high but it's like. I went through so much, it's like, it's hard to believe it. Right, definitely. Then when it actually happened, it's like, oh shit, they, they really did see what I was seeing in myself. Yeah, I um, I felt that way, you know, it's like, I'm here, but it still was things that was happening because I was the eighth pick, and I still remember to this day, you know, all of the, the top players, you know, they was having a conversation after they got selected with Rebecca Lobo. Yeah. And so I don't think they expected me because when I got called, she was like, oh, we're running out of time. I'm like, how you running out of time? I'm the eighth pick. Yeah. But then here comes the third round, somebody from UConn, now y'all got time to interview her. Yeah. But yeah. you ain't have time to interview me, and I'm the eighth pick. Yeah. So, you know, it was things like that where I felt I still, you know, had, to had something yourself. to prove. Like, yeah. oh, okay, I see how it is. I'm going to take that. Yeah. I'm going to remember it. Still to this day, 12 years later in the league, I'm like, you Mental played roller. me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like well, all right, yeah. No, that's real talk. Like, I, 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 yeah. I feel like I, I agree with that, though. Like, I told one of my friends a, a long time. Because I watch, you know, that's something that us as athletes, ball players, whatever, we watch the draft every year, no matter who it is. Right. Wish the youngins well, know how they feeling, love to see the feelings. Like, I don't I don't feel that those people up there, the analyst is doing their job that day. That should be the one day that you can't be critical of these kids. Right. I don't care what's going on. And, you know, it's certain stuff. Hey, you got to talk about this. But you shouldn't be – because I remember um, in, in particular, Jay Billis. I'm watching the draft, and it's like, you know, Josh Smith get drafted. This is when he went out of high school. And they like he, – he like, if, they ever, if we had to pick somebody, he would be my pick for the bust of the draft. I'm looking like, man, what the, yeah. like, what, why does that have to be said? Like, we don't have to pick a bus. Like, come on, man. Like, everybody this kid has ever known is seeing him today. Right. Whether he's still know him or not, from grade school to kindergarten, everybody's right. ever known him, whether he's still know him or not. This is his day. Yeah. And for y'all, this is females. This is y'all day. Like, nobody should be able to be critical. Like, do all that shit tomorrow. Right. Do all that shit, the, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. the next day. But today, when you, when you out there with your family and you going out there with your suit, this is your one shining moment for your life. This right. is a hit. Man, you shouldn't, nobody shouldn't be nowhere in that audience on the TV, on the program, talking shit about you. Yeah. yeah. No type of way, form, or fashion. Like, I don't care what he did to come out of school or whatever. Like, you know, nah, not right now, bro. Do all that shit in the recap. Talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> like, don't do that when my boy up here with his family, right. kids, yeah. crying and shit. You yeah. over here talking about, yeah, he going to be the... Like, what? Oh, no, no I don't want to interview bro. him. Like, that ain't cool. Or, time. like, that stuff you yeah. happen. Because like, I was excited, be... you know? Yeah. I was like, oh, oh man, man, like, what, am I, what is she going to ask me what I'm going to talk about? And yeah. I walked over, it's like, oh, we're running out of time. I was like, that's whack. oh, yeah. okay, that's you know? Whack. <laughs> that's whack. That, that whole day posed to go so perfect right. for you. Like, like our day, we, we got a chance to experience it together, and it was just like, man, it was, it was so surreal. So you shouldn't have them moments. Like that, like, yeah. but that's a, you know, them UConn people, they stick together. <laughs> <laughs> so you get drafted to Atlanta Dream, and you know, uh, was Angel McCarthy there? No, yeah. she's a year after me. She's a year yeah. after you. Okay, okay. So you, you, you play for the Dream, and then you play for a year. Mm -hmm. You're in Atlanta just for a year, and then you go to the Windy City. Yes. Chicago. Chicago. You I spend see. You spend time there, so I know... I know you, your first year was kind of, you know, it, it was different. It was like you trying to feel yourself out. But mm -hmm. in Chicago, you had a couple of years to kind of feel the city, you know, get your friends, know your Great routine. City. It is. I love Chicago. Stuff, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, how was it playing for the Chicago Sky? It was different. Um, I was still young. You know, I came in my rookie year for Atlanta and I had that scoring mentality. Yeah. And, you know, early my coach was like, you're not in college no more, yeah. you know, Use your teammates, everybody play together. Because as soon as I touch the ball, I'm trying to score. Yeah. That's all I knew. And so then I was traded to Chicago, and it's like I had to start all over again. I'm on mm. a new team, and I had to find my way. The girls were very welcoming, but it was different. I was away from home. Yeah. Um, but the city was love. I, I adjusted. As I said, my coach told me, I have my scores. If you want to play on this team, were defend. Were y'all were y'all practicing at uh, Quest? Yeah, downtown. I remember yep. that because I, I remember this was like 
coming up toward the end of me working out with Tim Grover, like my last yeah. couple of years. And like, I remember, cause Sylvia Files came, then she used mm-hmm. to be in that dunking that thing. We used yeah. to be all be in that trip and like Dupree used to be there with y'all. Like I remember yeah. seeing y'all practice and like us walking by, going to the weight room over there and all that stuff. So I remember that team. Yeah. It was cool, um, and it was fun uh, practicing at Quest because we got to see you guys, the NBA players, come through, and it was all love. I really loved Chicago. I was there for nine years, so it's like a second home to me. Summertime shy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then you, uh, Vegas get a team. Vegas only had a team for, what, two years? Two years. Two years, and uh, it's Vegas. Yeah. I know, that's, Have you, that's, did you that's ever it. think that you would be living – in Las Vegas and or not at all. Much How time exciting is Las that playing Vegas. there too? Because yeah. it seems like y'all games be lit. Yeah. yeah, our games, our fans are amazing. You know, like every home game, we know it's going to be a great crowd. Yeah, um, I never imagined playing in Vegas. I'm from the East Coast. Yeah. you know, so going out west is far, yeah. but the fans they make it amazing. Our organization is super good, so I love it. You know, it's, it's been a great time for two my last two years there. I had y'all winning the WNBA championship this year. Yeah. I feel like y'all squad, y'all got a deep squad, y'all got a deep bench, y'all got y'all got stars, y'all got everything that y'all need. And the shot that your teammate made from half court, I felt like, deep. oh yeah, luck is on your side. Right. But when you win the championship, <laughs> you gotta play hard, you gotta stay disciplined, you gotta have a little bit of luck. Right. So when I seen that, I said, oh yeah. She <laughs> that thing. They I gonna said, win oh, it. Oh, this day right. year, they yeah. gonna win it. So. So I know y'all y'all lost and um but y'all coming back with the same basically core and so forth on. What you look forward to next season coming in with it? Cause it's kinda like y'all first year kinda really getting together. Y'all just got Cambridge, you just got yeah. you. We changed like, um, you know, made some few changes last year, but right now I'm a free agent. Oh. So I don't know, you know, if I'll be there or if I'll be somewhere else. So I mean Oh, and, and, they open, just, yeah. and they just changed the they just changed the contract yeah. law. So, you, hey, we free need to run it up. came at now. the right time, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need to run it up. Like, speaking on that, how do you feel about those? You know what I'm saying? Because it, I feel like it. I mean, obviously, a lot of people feel like those things should have been in place. Mm-hmm. But you know, the different flights and the travel. Like we talked to Candace, and it was just you know she mentioned a lot of those things that got upgraded and, and, and improvements for y'all. How do you feel about the new CBA and a lot of the improvements that have been made for you for you women? I feel like it, it's amazing. It's definitely, you know, a great step in the right direction. Um, some of the things that we were having to deal with, like the flights, you're sitting in the back of a plane. Yeah. Luckily in Vegas, we didn't have to deal with that. Bill was already booking us Delta Comfort or whatever airline we were flying, Comfort seats. Mm, yeah. Like he's all his mentality has always been about the players. Yeah. So we were fortunate already to be, you know, getting some of those perks. But now it's league wide, and which it, those things are important when you're on the road. Um, players having to share rooms. Like, we're grown women, Ridiculous. you know what I'm saying? Ridiculous. I used to pay extra when I was younger before I got my own room just to have my own room. Yeah. But it's just, the you know, those little things that, that changed already, you know, also the money, but just those little things are big factors. So, yeah. Bill is you guys' owner? No, no he's the coach. He's the coach. Oh, the coach. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I didn't know who she was talking about, but no. MGM <laughs> is the owner. Okay, yeah. well, no, what I'm saying is like those people that were already doing that for you, for you guys mm-hmm. as a team, that they they should be saluted and touted because right. they they definitely impacted the leagues doing that because they can't have one team being treated better than others and right. then they helped make that set the standards, what I mean. So they need to be saluted for that. Definitely. It kind of makes sense that you said that Bill was doing those things for you because we just had Isaiah mm-hmm. in and we talked to him about a lot of things. And the bad boys and the Pistons in particular, they were like the trendsetters in the league that started. He talked about it, how they were the first team to start staying in five-star hotels, mm-hmm. started traveling and got their own private plane and started doing those different things. So. From what you're saying, it seems that he's still continuing on the same type of oh, bad boy definitely. mantra and doing the same things and impacting the WNBA in the same way that the NBA impacted it. So just talk about Bill doing those things and how it is playing for him as a, you know, his 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 Pistons and his bad boy attitude and mentality because like Zeke was saying, he was one of the ones who never really deterred from that and that he really preaches and embraces the team aspect of the team game. Yeah, Um you know, Bill, he's definitely a player's coach. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to keep it real with you. He's very blunt. So I feel if you're, you know, mentally tough, you can handle it. Um, but I've always respected direct coaches that tell you what they want and tell yeah. you what it is. But also as far as like 
off the court, he takes he takes care of the team. He's like, these are the players. You want to make sure they're comfortable and make sure we don't have to worry about anything outside of basketball as far as like where we're living, what the things that we need. He even, you know, made a job available on the team for someone to just take care of the players. It's like whatever you need. Create if you get a, a flat tire, yeah. To, if you if something is wrong, you call this person and they're dope. gonna take care of it. That's dope. And even like when we're flying, it's like my players are not sitting in the back. You know, it's just little things like that that we as some players people, yeah, we appreciate. appreciate. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and notice. And, and you have people that, you know, they don't think about those things. But Bill, like you say, he was a player and they had that macho in Detroit. And I feel like he just carried it on. When you people talk about Bill or if you ask about how he is as a coach, they always say, you know, he takes care of the team for sure. Mm. Salute, Bill. Yeah. Salute, Bill. Real one. You a shoe fanatic. Like you love shoes. What I made do. you be, well, you're a hooper, so I, I know that's what you always have tennis shoes, but what was about it that you had to have, like different styles, kind, that you just kind of got a crazy more love than a regular shoe person? I always been into shoes since I was younger, but my parents couldn't afford them. So was, I was used to getting, you know, non-name brand shoes unless until it got to a point where I got it for a holiday or I worked for it. Oh. And so as got I got holidays. older, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't getting the holiday kicks. HJ 900 Pro Wings. <laughs> <laughs> then we got upgraded Air Force One for 55. That was, okay. best. that was as good as they got. So I stuck there. Yeah. But I, ain't I was, I was blessed. Like I was, I was in seventh grade wearing an 18. So it was like, I might as well buy wow. the best kind of shoe. We don't want Wait, to what size up. you wear now? 18. Wow. So you've been wearing that since seventh grade? Since seventh grade. Do you understand? Them things are skis. Okay. <laughs> that is, those are not shoes. Those are skis. Almost boats. Wow. We ain't not going to yeah. talk about your feet like that. I don't know. Trust me, I done heard them all. Oh, <laughs> man. Especially, see what I did? I done heard them all. Right. Well, fool in the lunchroom. But yeah, I just I just love them, especially like the OGs, um, the pairs that I couldn't get as a kid. I made it an issue to get, you know, as I got older. And then it's like, now the world, everyone is a sneakerhead. So yeah. like brands are creating more and it's just getting out of hand now. I think that's why the Lord blessed me because he knew how much I loved them shoes when I was little <laughs> and I could never get yeah. them and how much I wanted to get them. And I ain't even used to be one of them kids going to my pop like, Papa, I knew it wasn't happening. Right. It was just like, just wishful thinking. Like, well, when we got, you know, when you get to high school, you get good. Hey, you start kicking your shoes. I was like, ooh, yeah. then we got signed. Well, we got signed to go. You couldn't tell. Uh, like, just imagine being able to get anything you see in the store, it's, it's already at my house. Yeah. <laughs> like anything that you see at the store, and it's been at my house for a good month or two. Like, yeah. like by the time he, like, man, I was like, oh, that's a man, blessing. The well, Lord is good. Yeah. What was that shoe? Like, I know your, your parents didn't buy a shoe or they couldn't afford the shoes, but what was that shoe that when you finally, like, crossed over, like, no, I got to have that one. I'm going to save up. I'm going to do whatever, but I got to get them right there. Probably the Concord 11s. I was oh. in the ninth grade. That's one of the goat shoes yeah. of all time. And I seen this that's kid a, that's with a them high on. high five moment. <laughs> I seen this kid with them on. And he, I remember he had like the black and white striped shirt, some black jeans and the Concords oh, and that pattern. Yeah, that pattern. I was <laughs> like, yo, up. I need those. Yeah. I begged my daddy to buy those. So <laughs> I ended up getting them. And yeah. I wore them out till the pattern started cracking. Straight so up. so what was your top five shoes? Your favorite five shoes of all time was the five that you would say that your favorite five? So the Concord 11s, um, the Chicago ones, um, the Air Max 95, the, mm. the neon, the original ones, the Stan Smith Adidas. This is a classic woman. I can appreciate yeah. that. This is <laughs> um, very classic. I don't have a fifth one. Those are, did I say five? The you Air Max, four. the Jordan, the Stan Smith, the other Jordan. I don't know. Those are probably like my top four. Yeah, top yeah four. for sure. What's your favorite shoe to play in? The Elevens. I don't really like playing in those. I used you to. You want to mess them up? Yeah, or but I used to. But as I got older, now I gotta you know make sure my feet are comfortable and playing on defense. I gotta make sure I got enough good enough grip. You know. Yeah. For me, the, my favorite hooping jays have always been the 10s and yeah. the 13s because they got a little more room in them. I yeah. feel like I could throw my two, three pair of socks on, whatever, and it's still, 
got I felt like the elevens get a little narrow on your feet. But the tens and the thirteens. The tens are super comfortable. And Legend. I've always hooped in Chris uh sneakers as well. Yeah. His shoes was comfortable. I uh I love the platinum leather. I just feel like I just look good out there. Oh yeah, you definitely look good. <laughs> got oh, no. Like anything I do yeah. is just like a moment. Like you one of the you know, one of the more famous people about shoes and so forth on, why you haven't signed a shoe contract or even or have you even pursued to sign I haven't sign had one? the opportunity. You haven't had the opportunity. I've had people, you know, talk about it, but when it's time to send a contract, they never did. Yeah. So. Mm. Who would you love if you can be with anybody? Who would you love to be with? That's that's Yeah, thing. you know. I, would, I wanted to say it. Jordan oh. brand, of yeah. course, you know, it's... So no brain. I went to Laney High School. I oh played in Chicago God. for nine years. Yeah, you know that's what and blood. other people expect it. She you know brought, what I'm saying? She, she she scored more points than MJ in high school. <laughs> that should field. be rewarded, right? You feel me? I feel that. Your but, jersey up there too, right? Yeah, my jersey you, up there too. Her jersey yeah. in the same <laughs> rafters. Okay. You feel right me? Next to the yeah. goat. <laughs> definitely. So, I'm going I could have hooped too. in the Laneys. I could have wore the Laney t-shirts. I really was there. You feel me? It's 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 in line with what I do. It's in right. the books, baby. <laughs> so now it's, you know, it's at the point, like you said, I'm into fashion. So I feel like at this point, any brand that I was able to sign with, I could rock off and, and help it out tremendously. Let me ask you this. Like, I uh, had a lot of shoes, but I gave a lot of shoes to, like, kids who mm -hmm. uh, couldn't get shoes that were my size in, like, high school, junior high, or whatever. Q has storage units full of shoes. I'm about right. Right I know you have still, a lot of shoes. Yeah. Where do you keep your shoes? I don't have as many as Q for sure. <laughs> but I just moved. So prior, I had a shoe room. A shoe room. So I had bedroom. a bedroom that I made just for my shoes. So they're in a closet. Right now, I have them um, in containers that I have in storage as well. But see, I don't, I'm not a hoarder. And I hate oh, having to move see, all my, my shoes. Wife see this. She just used the word. So then I get I get rid of a lot as well. The more that I as accumulate, in, yeah, you, you, I start you, getting rid you of. Get rid of. You yeah. start blessing people. Yep. That's where I need to get better at getting <laughs> rid of some shoes. Yeah. Like, don't laugh. It overwhelms me just looking at all the shoes that I don't wear. I can't wear. Don't. I don't have to see them. So <laughs> it's in my it's in my best friend's crib, in my my pop's crib. And in my Best crib. friend crib, pops crib, storage unit, storage unit two, storage unit 223, but storage unit c I got So I got two I got two big boys coming. Okay. I know for a fact. They feet might get bigger, but at yeah. some point they going to wear 15. Yeah. And they going to love me for it. <laughs> for sure. They going to love me for it. They going to have the run of the mill. When I say they have they have a foot locker. Yeah. I'm talking about from regular joints to to the to the most elite joints. They could go from regular degla to they ain't worried about no shoes. They won't be like they daddy was yeah. in grade school or high school. They ain't like me now. Like they killing everything now. I'm blessed with Jordan Brand be sending them stuff. So they killing them. My look my little show what they call them Demon flavors. Flavors. <laughs> yeah. That's what they call them. Flavor. I want them flavors. Chris Paul, he's one of my favorite players. He, uh, I would love to play with him. I would hate to play against him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, this attitude I like a, a lot about Chris Paul. Can you tell me what you think about Chris Paul's game as an NBA player and as a basketball player and what he means to you and, and what he means to you being in your life? I think you made a valid point where you were saying you would hate to play against him. You know, a lot of people in the league, Chris is my friend and I hear stories they they don't like him. Nah. He's a competitor. Yeah. He's a dog. He wants to win. Yeah. And that's how he plays. Yeah. So if you're playing against him, you're not going to like him. But he's also a good teammate. He, you know, always takes care of the younger players. He He's a leader. Yeah. I love his game. Um, as a friend, we're close. He's like a brother to me. We've gotten, you know, close over the years. Um, and so he's... A valuable person in my life, for sure. Those things that were like how you say people don't like him. I was always thrown off by that because you know we met we met CP as a was he still in high school he was or still college? In high school. Mm -hmm. So we met him when he was really young when he first started coming to Jordan camp. By then we had already been counselors there. Now we were in the NBA 
and we were living in LA, so it was literally like an hour drive for us to get there. And we like, we know it's gonna be some good bump up there because mm-hmm. they got the best college players, and you know we had been there, so we like, we gonna go up there and play in the, in the counselor game. So that was when we first met him. But like from day one, super cool, personable, chill, down earth dude, and love the hoop. And he yeah, was sick, like because like you know, so yeah. you remember MJ put him on our team. It was me, you, him. MJ and one other, we, we ran the court. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? It was like that that year in particular, it was it was it was some sick competition up there. They had Gilbert Rennies, Richard Jefferson, Jason Garner, all of the can Arizona kids. It was like all the kids from all around the country, the Feltons from UNC, yeah. Sean May, Shark, McCants, all of them was there. And so that was like when I first saw, like, yo, we all kind of saw me, him, and MJ. You know, we sat down at the end. MJ said, yo, yeah, he stick out. I'm over there, know how to play. Yeah. Like, and it was like to see somebody at such a young age be able to like be be the general on the floor. Mm-hmm. That was when I Take knew control right of then, the game. like, yo. He I don't won't. know what type of score he gonna be, but like this boy know how to run the show. Like yeah. he was out there, like, and it was like navigating man, it. Yeah, that was when we first knew, like, okay. He's special. Then we saw Felton and saw him, and it was like that was when we first started to know him and get to know those guys. But I, I always saw the same thing because you know he had that competitive side. You yeah. would see you might jab somebody in the stomach, like oh shit, like yeah. Yeah, he did that. Like hey, we out here, you right. know what I'm saying? But you respected that, and so I, I agree with you. Like it was the same thing. Like you you love to play with him. You don't want to play against him type deal. How much have you benefited for him being with Jordan Brand? Do CP send you shoes? I know this, is, this, is this, this the, the home. Plug. It's like, hey. He's supposed to be the plug. He sent me his shoes. What That's about dope. everything else? No. Yeah. I'm looking into the camera. Chris Paul. You know, I don't really like to ask for things either. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I already yeah, I know, know he got a lot of people everything. that he's, yeah. you know, looking yeah, after. Yeah, right. So I appreciate, you know, when he sent me his kicks, that's the family real, and friends nah, kicks. That's real though. Because yeah. those, so those are those are rare. People yeah, can't get the family right. and friends joint. So that's that's still you still be in the plug, bro. I ain't gonna get on you too hard. Yeah, we was, you know, trying to make a situation where I could be under Jordan Brand or be, you know, under him with Jordan Brand, but you know, that didn't fall through. So mm. You got a clothing line. Yeah. Tie clothing line. Why not add the shoes with the clothing line? Because you evidently you got all the swag and the style and like why not? Why not just try to create your own shoe? I mean, I came out with a shoe before, like a casual shoe, yeah. not a basketball shoe. Um, it did pretty well. Um, it's it's a lot harder finding the the right production company for shoes than it is for clothes. Mm-hmm. So I just haven't you know, ventured out in that Got aspect that far, yet. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the clothes. Top brand. Your hoodie is super dope that Thank you got on. She right gonna now. get us one. Yeah, she already asked our yeah. size. Yeah. Like, on the list. See it. On the left head <laughs> with us one time. You feel me? So um what made you get into fashion? Because we know you love shoes, mm-hmm. so now you into the clothes and I um I hear a lot of people when I see you, I, I like the way you dress, like you how you present yourself. So what made you League fits. wanna put it out there for everybody <laughs> I see to, you. to well, it initially to. started with um, the fans. Uh, when I was in Chicago, they wasn't selling my jersey, and I was one of the fans' favorite, but I wasn't, you know, the superstar where they would sell the jersey. So it started with, you know, I T-shirts like for the fan base to have something of you. that represented me. Yeah. Um, and it started with just logos, the TY1 logo, and it went well, you know, started doing better than I actually thought. And so I was like, okay, let me venture out to hats and hoodies and joggers and socks and... That's just how it went. Now it's more so I started doing things with like phrases or words. Yeah, I love that the message. That's what I love you know? the message. Like believe yeah. in yourself, be yourself. Right. I think that's a, you know what I'm saying, a powerful message, especially to the youth and just people in general. Cause I think in this in this era yeah. or generation or whatever you want to call it with the social media, it's so much so much fraudulent behavior. People out there trying to portray and be things they not when right. it's like you can only be you. That's the only person available. Everybody else taking up. Is no matter what you try and put that front on for, is we all gonna see you eventually. Right, so yep. just yeah. go ahead, choose up, and be who you are. So I, I love that 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 messaging on there. Thank you. The NBA has teams now. They have these different type of jerseys. Uh, I like the uh, Los Angeles Clippers, the mm-hmm. uh, San Andreas, the San Andreas yeah. type jersey. I like the. The best style from Brooklyn. Yeah, so I know definitely. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of them I like. Which ones that stuck out to you that you thought like, oh man, them dope, dope colors. 
Um, I definitely wanted the uh, the Ben Stuy one, the yeah. the Brooklyn one. Yeah, yeah. That was dope. Growing up, you know, always visiting my aunt in New York, yeah. knowing from about Ben Stuy, I yeah. just it related more to me. That Brooklyn Nets, man, get Ty Young a Ben Stuy jersey, yeah, send it to her with her name on it. Hook it up, man. This is nothing for y'all PR department. This is easy. We got an ex-PR department from the Knicks. We know how this goes. Make it happen, man. <laughs> T. Young. Who has the best looking jerseys in the WNBA? Our jerseys are the best. The Aces? Yeah. Aces was the Aces the Aces black with the red. Yeah, got the red, red on the side. The Ace across the front. Even the red ones that we wore this year yeah. was super dope. I had so many people trying to get my jersey. Yeah. You know, it's like, I need that. Because they didn't sell the red ones. They sold the black ones. Yeah. Th them definitely one of my yeah. favorite favorite jerseys. For you, like, so for us, obviously, well, for the world, obviously, Jordan is the, is the GOAT. For you, who is the female version of Jordan for you that you grew up looking at was, like, the best female player to you? Growing up, it was Cynthia Cooper. Cynthia Cooper was yeah. the one. And for me, growing up, I was a point guard. Yeah. So I always watched point guards play. Mm -hmm. And that's why how Teresa became a favorite and how Cooper was one of my favorites, too. That's who you pat in your game after. Yeah. You to, yeah. She used to race the <laughs> that jump. And I used to do all <laughs> type of stuff like that in college. Yeah. So, yeah. Party. I know what I want to know. Cause you said it like me, you grew up, we all grew up, you know, a little, you know, not the richest or whatever, not the most fortunate. So when you first start getting the money, when you look back now, you 12, 13 years deep, what is it that you bought where now the 13, 12 year vet looking back like you was tripping? But even though then, even though you know you was tripping, yeah. like it was like, this was what every bit worth it at the time when I did it. I was spending money on designing everything, clothes, belts, bags, shoes. And now I look at it like, I don't care about none of that. Yeah. And so- Ain't that crazy how yeah. yeah, we go through that process Man, coming in the league, I was spending all that my money, money on Louis, everything. Gucci, yeah. this, and then you be looking back like, bro, I got so much stuff that literally I don't use. Like my, my wife yeah. found out this consignment type place oh, yeah. where you can, man, I, <laughs> man, what? We could sell this shit? Like, right. get rid of all right. of it. I don't, I don't use of none of the, it. I don't use, man, look, dead serious. That's real talk right there. Consign all this stuff. Yeah, take it all. My mom passed away from cancer. Your uh, pops passed away from mm -hmm. cancer. After they passed away, you decided to do the American Cancer Foundation? Yes. Uh, be an ambassador yes. for it. What made you go that hard into it? Well, when my father was diagnosed, I've never heard of pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. So I started Googling and trying to figure out, you know, what it was, how do you get it? And then I felt after that, if I didn't know what it was and I had someone that close to me, a lot of other people didn't either. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do more to make it an awareness because, you know, everyone knows about breast cancer more so than, you know, a lot of other. Yeah. And so I just felt like with my platform and with how it affected my family, I could do more to, you know, bring awareness to it. First time I met Michael Jordan, I was like, ah, I couldn't believe he cussed. <laughs> Like he was like, it's like he had the glow. You know, I don't know if y'all ever watched the movie with Last Dragon with Bruce, with Bruce Leroy, <laughs> but Mike had that glow, like that ring around him when I when I first met him young. When you first met Mike, like how did you feel? How was how was that for you? I was speechless. Like I was with my best friend. He had to talk for me because I couldn't say anything. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> it's like there's MJ. You know, we were in Barney's, and I'm like MJ. I'm like, who's MJ? Michael Jordan. I'm like, wait, what? And so when I saw him, I just froze. My stomach was hurting. Like <laughs> I couldn't say a word. Like he was talking to me, and I was just looking at him like, yo, you are the goat. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. I was speechless. That's what's up. That's so it was amazing because. It's been years, you know, coming from the same hometown. And that was my first time ever meeting him. So, so you play, you you play a lot overseas and a lot of different places. And I hear a lot of different stories from, you know, both women and men. I got partners that played overseas and different type of stories. How was your overseas experience? And, and was it, you know, what did you think of your years in different places? Did you like them? Did you not? Hold on, hold on. Before you start, how was Brazil? Brazil was beautiful. Brazil, um, yeah. Brazil. I like Brazil a lot. The weather yeah. was nice. I was on the beach. Um, it yeah. was hot. That's why you want to know about Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> you know about Brazil. the beach in Brazil. Yeah. The league wasn't, you know, that big. Yeah. But, 
I still enjoyed it. You enjoyed it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. How? Hold on. Yeah, we got to <laughs> talk about Brazil first. <laughs> then we can get to all the other stuff. So how was the rest of the place? Um, Israel was probably one of my favorite as far as it's being Americanized and everyone speak English. You, was it Tel Aviv? I played in Herzliya and Asdod when I was in um, Israel. But for me, overseas, it was tough. Um, I wasn't really on top teams like that, except for one year in Israel. And like Israel is at the the top, you know, at of the margin as far as the team. So it was tough for me. I felt like I could have been on better teams, mm. but it's the same as they go with WNBA stats or, you know, the WNBA stars, it kind of goes over for overseas, the, the top teams, that's who they want as well. Right. So I've enjoyed the experience. There's countries that I would never have been if it wasn't for basketball. So I was super blessed for those opportunities. But I love being at home. So now I'm just, I'm kind of done mm-hmm. with overseas. Yeah. yeah. And well, the contracts went up, so it's kind of yeah. a better opportunity to just stick around. You don't have to go and just try to get the extra money. Or, Definitely. Or so forth. You come over here and you play a season in the WNBA and then you go overseas and come back. It's like playing two seasons mm-hmm. for two different teams in two different countries, like twice a year. How is that? How is the grind of doing that and then coming back and doing that? It's definitely for the love of the game. It's it's tough um, and it wears on your body. And that is a reason that I used to take years off. Like I went five years straight, WNBA and overseas. And then I took some overseas time off yeah. mm. because I'm a stickler with taking care of my body. Yeah. And I believe that's why a lot of women have these nagging injuries or have different injuries that prolong because you don't take a break because you're, yeah. you know, chasing that bag yeah. and you're not really taking care of your body. So how, how was the practices over there? Cause I was that's what like, I've always like, heard. It's like two a day. The practices yeah. is like crazy over there. Depending on what country, yeah. a lot of the countries, and that was one reason why I used to go to Israel. We practiced once, yeah. but a lot of the countries you practice twice a day in the morning. It's more like a shooting practice. And then in the evening, it's like a get after it practice. Yeah. Um, mm. It just depends on the country that you're in and what that coach wants. Some countries, when I was in China, they practiced twice a day and yeah. it was just running. Uh, but I had it in my contract where I only practiced once. Mm-hmm. But it was a lot to see those little girls, the things that they were having them do, it was a lot. Yeah. Top five women's players of all time. Well, not, not top five. Your favorite five women players of all time. Who is Joe your favorite Mount five? Rushmore. You don't got to be like the, the usual top five. It's just who you like the most. Tina Thompson. Teresa Weatherspoon, Cynthia Cooper, um, Swoops. And Comets. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would put myself, of course. <laughs> but, up. let's see. Tarasi. Tarasi. Yeah. Hey, we like to play start, bench, or cut, right? And... It's to me, it's a fun game, but I want to. I, I like these these three young boys that's coming up, and I feel like all of them kind of kind of getting disrespected on the All Star edition of things. Because I think I think we as a league need to really identify and put out there what the standards of voting is. Like, mm-hmm. are we? Is it an individual award? Is it a team award? Is it what your team record is? We need to identify so people won't be upset. Right. Because in my opinion, he, all three of these dudes are all-star caliber level players. So I'm going to ask you who, you, who would you start bench cut? Bradley Bill, Devin Booker, and Zach Levine. All three studs. Yeah. All three of them is, is is superstars in the making, and they they big boy balling at the two guard. So what are we starting for? Like all start star? No, no, or just a game. Start. Just yeah. Just, if you the coach, who you gonna start? Who you gonna bench? Who you gonna cut? Just period. It ain't no particular game. Team. Whatever. It just and yo, it's it's all on your opinion. Like somebody else. Like I might say a different one than you do. And who are the three again? Brad Bill. Devin Booker, Zach Levine, Young Boy Edition. I'm gonna start Brad. I'm a bench book, and I'm gonna cut Zach. Mm. Mm. Another one. Another one. Tarasi Cooper Weatherspoon. 
Who's you? Store bench cut. Man, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Tarasi, Weatherspoon, and Cooper. Mm, yeah. That's tough. Wow. That is a good one. That's tough, man. It's crazy. Start they bench cut. About who you cut. I here. know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. It's all the um, based. Yeah. <laughs> all good. There's no disrespect. All of them in the category because they all cold, so nobody lose. Right. That's tough. I'm starting teaspoon. I'm um. Coming off the bench with Coop, and mm -hmm. I got to cut DT. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. When it comes to the NBA right now, like, outside of CP3, because we know that's your partner, who do, who do you who do you like? Like, who would you go? Like, if they came to Atlanta and you ain't got nothing to do, you got a chance, like, I want to go see this dude play in person. Because whatever they do, I'm rocking with them. I'm a fan of how they play. Like, somebody that, I mean, I, I mean, obviously, we all know the LeBrons, the, the Giannis's, those are the, the clear cut we know, guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But... Who is somebody else that you, maybe a young guy or maybe a middle, you know, in the middle of his career type guy that we wouldn't just jump off the page as that you want to go to the arena and see play? Well, he's also my friend, but he's not like a big star. Jordan for uh, Washington. McCray? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Now, he a bucket yeah. getter. Yeah. yeah. He's and a bucket getter, for yeah. real. Even when he was in the G League to coming back Cleveland, to the... Cleveland, when he yeah. had that stand in Cleveland yeah. getting... Yeah. I remember Anytime I was Anytime he's on the then, court, so it I don't was, matter. I was a pro yeah. scout, so I used to... The minutes he's going after it, and I love to watch bucket, that. Yeah. For real. Jordan McCray, and yep. right now he'll get 30. Like somebody, Brad Bill or somebody get hurt, he'll have 30. Yep. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Shout he out Jordan McCray. He just did it not too long ago. He had like 32 or something. When B. Bill had missed a couple games, he definitely... He a bucket. Right on. You know what I'm saying? But here, this is actually their, uh, the blackest one's creation. We came with the black box. So we're okay. trying to show love to our guests. You know, you got the merch and the hoodie. Yeah. So we know we want to try and, you know, show love. This is the same one he got on. I like this. <laughs> little hat, little t shirt. Yeah. And, I appreciate it. And then we got very, very special uh, sponsors. Okay. Hennessy, a.k.a. Yak. But they, they hook us up with the special Knuckleheads oh, edition. Oh, that's dope. So, you know yak. what I'm saying? Like, that good Yak. You can't get that in stores. Yeah, you know what I'm so saying? So, sip that slow. Slip that this. slow. Yeah, sip the slow. Yeah, so, you know. Appreciate it. We definitely <laughs> appreciate you coming through, rocking with us, yeah, blessing us with you. the presence. I appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, you know, we pleasure. keep goats on here. We think you're one of the goats, so. I appreciate that.